G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Um, I've just finished playing out my first game of Spectre, um, my first game, um, which we filmed and, uh, you know, that's what this video is for. I thought I'd put up this quick preface just to say, you know, I did make a lot of errors. Um, you know, I do correct them with the annotations throughout the video. Um, but, you know, it was great fun. And, you know, I learned uh, several things and, you know, I got cover wrong for most of the game. Um, the sound also, you know, I'm still trying to figure out this sound. Every time I adjust it and change it, you know, it's either really low and tinny or, you know, it, it's really, really deep. And, you know, me breathing on the microphone doesn't help and um, the bees and peas popping and uh, it's, uh, you know, I'll figure it out. The more we do this, the more we'll figure it out. So I appreciate you uh, uh, sticking with me and the understanding. Um, I have tried to record the audio separately. Um, but my um, audio recording software on the PC seems to record it at a different speed than the cameras do, and it slowly, slowly, slowly s s sort of desyncs, and it's super annoying to try and get it back. So, you know, the mics are going through the wireless receiver, through the mixing desk, into the studio camera where the sound is being recorded. Anyway, we'll figure all of that out. The video is very long, and uh, it's late at night, and, uh, you know, we don't need this intro to go on anymore. So thanks for tuning in. Um, let me know what you think of the game in the, in the comments below. Have a look in the description and join the Facebook group. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. G'day everyone, Viv here. Welcome back. I hope you're all keeping well. Now that we've been through, you know, a very brief overview of the turn sequence, I thought we might, you know, play a little, you know, a game here with, you know, some of the rules that we've learnt during the initiative, the command phase, the movement and tactical actions and the combat phase. So I'm going to try and do this all at the same time. You know, there might be some blunders. There'll be checking of the rule book, which we'll see. Um, and, you know, we'll try and learn this as we go. So I've got set up here on the table 75 points worth of models. And uh, I've made myself a little uh, list. So down in the bottom corner down here, there's three US Force Recons. Uh, there's a squad leader. He's got a carbine, and I've put a red dot on it. So this is the first time we'll talk about equipment. I've got a trooper with a carbine, a red dot, and an underbarrel grenade launcher, which we may or may not use. And then a regular trooper, again, with a carbine and a red dot. And they're going to start down on the bottom down here. On the other side of the table, I've got, how many have I got? Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six ISIS fighters. Um, I've got one guy up here on the building. This is my first squad and second squad. One guy with an AK and another guy with a, um, a light machine gun. And at the back here, I've got a squad leader and three guys all with AKs. So these guys cost 70 points and my US recon cost 73. Okay. They're my two forces. A little bit of gear. But, you know, it's far from being what Spectre is about. You know, highly specced out uh, professional fighters versus, you know, militants. The yellow counter here indicates that, uh, you know, who has the initiative in this phase so I don't forget. And I've got a bunch of cards and tokens here that I'm going to use as well. So we're going to start the game with the, the US side, the um, US recon uh, guys having the initiative. So there's no need to do anything for the initiative phase because, you know, it's already been assigned by the scenario. So we go straight into command actions. Now, during this game, I'm not going to worry about any command action. So we're going to completely skip that phase for both sides. I'm really just interested in getting used to, you know, a little bit of movement um, and then, you know, some shooting. And that's pretty much all we're going to be worried about. And I've put the, uh, the, the um, underbarrel grenade launcher in there. So we perhaps might have a look at, you know, fragmentation weapons. I'm not sure. This is just a chance for me to, you know, start playing the game. This is the first time I've played it. I'm not a professional. Um, you know, here we go. Uh, let's learn together. So, these guys have to operate as a squad, so they have to stay within two inches of each other. It's my turn to do movement. So, I'm going to move this guy at the back here, up here, six inches. I'm going to move my squad leader over here. And then we'll bring this guy, we'll bring this guy up behind this guy. 
yeah, we'll stick him there. That's going to be my movement so far. Fairly cautious. Oh, yes. What is the scenario and the objective? Um, there isn't one, really. Um, it's just, you know, let's just fight and see what happens. So that's the US recon, uh, recon's uh, movement. No tactical actions at this stage. Um, let me get my tactical actions out so I can see them. Which ones am I using? I'm just going to use combat sprint and um, tactical movement at this stage. We won't worry about close combat or breaching or anything like that. Okay, so let's go around the other side of the table and we'll have a look at these guys over here. My um, militants here. This guy at the front, the team leader, he's going to use his combat sprint. So if I get my little sheets out, which are over here, you'll have to apologize as I shuffle around the table and whatnot. He's got an agility of three. So these guys are trained. I've got a trained squad leader and trained soldiers and a professional squad leader and professional soldiers. So the trained squad leader has an agility of three. So using combat sprint, Gives me six inches of movement plus my three inches for my agility, which can brings me up to the fence here. Now, because he's done that, he can't shoot. Uh, so we'll have to be aware of that. Let's just put a little counter next to him so we know that he's uh, sprinted his way there. This guy at the back... I'm going to move this guy six inches sort of just behind the barrels here or those crates. I'm going to check the height of this building. It's two and a half inches. I was thinking I might be able to move one of these guys next to the building and move the other guy next to him and try and lift that guy up onto the building using leg up. But, you know, we'll look at that later on. And I'll do a tactical sprint for this guy as well. And uh, he has agility. Also going to be three, I'm fairly certain. Yep. So we'll do his six inches to sort of here. And then three inches to around here. And he's also sp uh, sprinted. So we'll check a, chuck a token next to him. I'm going to sprint this guy over this way. Actually, I can't. I can't because this is a unit here. They have to be within two inches of each other. So this guy will just move around the corner here. So I have to maintain that unit coherency as we spoke about in the previous video. So that's my movement. The two guys on the buildings here aren't going to move. So now we move on to the next phase again. Um, Swapping back to our, our US recon for the command phase. So they'll go first because they have initiative. Nobody has done anything that prevents them from shooting. So now it's time to start seeing if we can shoot anything. So we might start with the, the guy at the back here. He's going to try and have a shot. Okay, can't see anything past those barrels. I'm going to try and shoot this guy on the roof that's got the light machine gun. That would probably make sense. So the first thing is we need to measure our range and make sure that we're inside our range band, which we are. He's carrying a carbine, which has a range of 16 inches, and, you know, we're only 12 inches away. So if we have a look now in the rule book here at uh, carbines. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Carbines have a special rule called rapid fire and compact. So rapid fire allows them to fire twice at a minus one to their targeting roll. And compact allows them to, uh, to get a plus one if they're within their first range band. So their first range band is 16 inches. So they'll get a plus one to their targeting roll. And then if they fire twice, they get a negative one uh, on each shot to their targeting roll. So... Let's have a couple of shots at this guy on the roof. He's got some red, uh, some green dice, so we'll do our first shot. He's got a shooting skill. Let's have a look. Of five versus defense two. So we'll roll up his uh, dice first. So four plus five is nine. Excuse me. 
plus one for the range band for that compact special rule that the uh, carbine has brings our total up to 10. Now, am I going to fire twice? Mm, nah, let's just leave it like that. So I'll put these dice just so I know that this guy scored a 10. Now, the guy on the roof here, he has a defense of two, so we'll roll his dice. <laughs> it's not looking good. So he's rolled a two, plus two is four. Now, he got some modifiers, one for being elevated, which gives him plus one. So we go from a four to a five. And I'll also give him some cover. We'll talk more about cover later on once we uh, cover, you know, that in a proper video. So I'm going to call his six. So we've got 10 versus six. This guy's certainly been hit. So let's allocate him some suppression and then make a lethality roll. So the carbine has a lethality of four or more. Bam. So that guy is dead. All right, there goes uh, his chances of lighting some people up with the light machine gun. It's got some interesting special rules, but, you know, there we go. So now this guy is done. This guy's going to try and hit this guy. Same sort of deal. He's got the carbine. Um, oh, I also forgot about the red dot on these. The red dot also adds plus one to your targeting roll. So this guy's starting off with a five. Plus one for the red dot. Six plus one for the compact special rule of the carbine, which takes him up to seven, plus his dice roll. <laughs> Jesus. 13. So my Isis guy can't beat that. doesn't matter what he rolls. Uh, let's just roll it for the sake of, you know, completeness. So defense two plus four is six, plus one for elevation and plus one for heart cover. Gives him a total of eight. You know, there's no possible way that he can beat that. So my lethality roll for this guy, six. Bam. <laughs> it's brutal. This guy's dead. And that suppression, when this guy died, I should have allocated it to this guy. When that guy dies, you know, the suppression just disappears. Now, my um, squad leader down the bottom here can't see anything. Oh, he can. We can see this guy back here, the one that ran. So let's have a shot with that guy. He's going to also be within... 16 inches easily so you know he's got a shooting value of five plus one for the red dot and plus one for the carbine special rule brings him up to seven plus his dice roll of two gives him a total score of nine now my isis fighter at the back here he sprinted so does that give him anything no Movement is equal to six inches plus your agility. Cannot shoot during the combat phase and cannot be used to charge an enemy. So there's no defensive modifiers for him. So he's going to purely have his defense of two, um, plus his dice roll, plus a little bit of cover on the way. So three plus two brings him up to five. He'll get one point of cover for the uh, the wall here. And I reckon he's 50% obscured. So that'll give him up to seven. Still not enough. The US recon guy beats him. So we roll lethality. Again, four or more. No. So this guy has been hit. We need a point of suppression on, uh, suppression on him. And we need to roll a wound for him. One. That's just a light wound. So he may only crawl three inches. Fire primary sidearm for one turn. Then he's recovered. So we'll put a light token next to him. Now we'll switch around to, you know, the opponent side. All of these guys are fired, so we'll come around the other side. It's fairly brutal. I was hoping that these guys on the roof would survive. I really wanted that machine gunner to light these two guys up. You know, a light machine gun has a, a rule called sustained, which uh, allows him to fire four shots, and he can spread that across multiple targets. But, you know, it's not looking very good. This guy sprinted, so he can't shoot. This guy sprinted and is also wounded, but, you know, he can't shoot because he sprinted. These two guys at the back here oh, can't see anything. Wow. Okay, that's really, really bad news. Okay, so now, so those guys can't shoot at anything. No, he ran. All right, there we go. So that's the end of the first turn. Now we come back around. We need to roll our um, initiative. So initiative, as I've mentioned, is a D6 plus your command. 
the command for the force recon is four. For the um, ISIS fighters, it's three. So let's roll this guy. Three plus four gives him a total of seven. For these guys, it's a dice roll. Two plus three is five. So they've already lost. Minus each point of suppression they suffered during the previous turn. Now, this is one point that, you know, I might need to clarify. You know, I did have a unit over here on the building that had suppression, but, you know, they lost it when they died. There was still one point over here. Um, in fact, there was two points. This guy had a point of suppression, and when he died, he passed it to this guy. This guy was then shot out. He would have earned a point of suppression. So there would have been two points of suppression over here, plus this point of suppression over here. So that's three points of suppression that these guys have. And according to the rules, that's a negative modifier for your initiative roll. So that drops their roll down to two. So I need to confirm that if you earn suppression during your previous turn and then lose it when you die, does that still count towards the su suppression that you earned in the previous turn for the per perspectives of, uh, you know, this initiative roll? So, so our Force Recon guys retain um, initiative. And this is now turn two. Let's stick a little dice up here that says turn two. Okay, so. I'm going to. I'm going to combat sprint this guy. To try and get him over here somewhere. Can I get there without having to sprint? I kind of can. So I want to get him to about here. And to get him to about there, I need to climb up over this obstacle. And to do that, I need to pass an agility test. And the agility for these guys is a four. So I need four or less. No, he's failed. Moves up to these containers and says, I'm not climbing over the top of them. This guy's also going to try the same thing, except he's going to move one inch this way, try and climb into this garden and finish up behind this wall here. So he climbs up, that's one inch, two inches, and you know about two and a half inches will bring him sort of behind this wall here. My commander is now out of cohesion. Idiot. So I'll need to move him into co um, coherency. And I can just shuffle him across like this, but then he can't see anything. Let's shuffle him across a little bit here. And we'll try and, try and climb up on the top of this so he can peer over the top. Again, my agility test, four or less. No, he doesn't want to do that. So he's stuck behind the crates. All right. So I'm not doing anything else. You know, again, just wanted to recap that we're skipping the command phase because no one's using command actions at this stage. We're just getting used to movement and shooting. Now, these guys over here, um, at the beginning um, of the command phase, Everybody loses a point of suppression. So we'll take that suppression off of this guy. He's going to spend this turn just healing himself. Again, remember, you know, he's got a light wound. So for one turn, he can only crawl three inches and shoot um, his primary weapons and stuff. So we'll clean up these sprint tokens. You know, we should probably do that at the end of the round. There needs to be a cleanup phase if I'm going to be using tokens. Um, we'll shuffle this guy three inches. We can get him towards the wall and take his light token with him. That's all he can do. I'm going to... Hmm. Alright, I'm going to try and move this guy around the four or so inches around these crates here to this wall. Try and climb over it and stand in that gap there. So his agility is three. So I need a three or less to clear the wall, which I do. Fantastic. So he'll get up and come and stand in this little gap here. Um, now, my leader can't really see anything from where he is. We can kind of see this guy, but he's more than 50% obscured. That's okay. Just gonna shuffle him over a little bit just so I get a, a better sight on that guy. And then this guy. I might combat sprint this guy around. Oh no, I can't. I need to maintain maintain my coherency. 
<clears throat> going to move this guy over here. We're going to try and climb up on top of these boxes. So again, I need a three or less. He does. Great. So I'll climb up on top of these boxes and that will allow me to see over this and shoot that guy at the back. There we go. That's the movement and tactical actions phase. Now we come to the combat phase, starting with our force recon guys. They have initiative. Yeah, this is brutal, this game. All right, so this guy's going to shoot this chap over here. Again, you know, he, we're starting on sevens. He's got a shooting value of five. Plus one for his red dot and plus one for the carbine's compact special rule, which starts me at seven. Plus a dice roll of two gives me a total of nine. It's brutal because this guy has a defense of two plus one for the cover. So three. I need to roll a six or more. <laughs> there we go. So nothing happens here. But this guy's been shot out, so he ends a point of suppression. Okay. Just to recap what happened then, you need to beat your opponent's score. You can't equal it. So in this case, it was an equal. My shooting guy's uh, value of nine or score of nine. And this guy's dice of six plus his defense of two plus one for the cover that he's in. Um, and you, know, you could probably argue that he's certainly more than 50% obscured behind there, so he'd even get an extra one taking him to 10. Anyway, so there we go. That's that shot done. Now, this guy can't see anything, but this guy who's sort of just peeking over the top of those crates can see the guy standing on top of these barrels here. So we're certainly within range again, so we're starting on sevens plus a dice roll. So that gives me a total of eight. Now this guy at the back here, his defense is two, plus one for the cover that he's behind, and uh, plus uh, another one, I'm going to call him elevated, he is taller or higher than this guy at the back, excuse me, I'm not sure how high that elevation needs to be, if it needs to be two or three inches or a story, it might be a story, but you know, just for the sake of you know, some fun and interest, let's call it elevated, so plus one for elevation, plus one for cover, um, plus two for his defense. So he's starting at four plus a dice roll. Gives him nine. All right, so they're surviving okay. But again, you know, he's been shot at, so point of suppression. Nobody else over here can see anything. So now we go over to our um, ISIS fighters over there, our militants. So... Now, keeping in mind that uh, suppression affects us, let's start with the guy that's wounded. Um, he can fire his primary weapons and his sidearms. He doesn't have any sidearms, but he's got a primary weapon. And we can see this guy over here. Now, uh, he's got an AK-47. It has a 24-inch range band, but um, it has rapid fire on it. So I can fire twice at a minus one. Um, so let's 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 do the first shot. So he's got a shooting ability of three, uh, four. Sorry, four plus a dice roll. So it gives him a total of nine altogether. But you know he's carrying one. Oh no, he doesn't have any suppression. He lost it during the command phase. That's perfectly fine. So so far he's got a total of nine. You know, just out of interest, I might drop that one and fire again. Whoops. So we're starting on four. Look at that. So four plus six is ten, minus the uh, um, uh, rapid fire special rule. So I've got two results. I've got a nine and an eight. So let's roll up our defense for this guy. His defense value is two plus two for the cover. His cover and more than 50% obscured. So he's starting on four plus a dice roll. Four plus nine, that'll cancel this one. And four plus one equals a five. So before we go any further, he's been shot at twice. So we need to give this guy two points of suppression. So we'll allocate them to him there. And um, now he's been shot. So the lethality rating of a AK-47 is a four or more. No, so I've wounded him. How badly have I wounded him? Not that bad. It's a medium wound. So that guy can only crawl three inches, shoot his sidearm and his firearm, 
and in two turns he'll recover. Now, this guy down here can see this guy here. So we'll shoot at this guy here, starting with a, a four for my shooting value plus a dice roll. So it gives me a total so far of nine. Um, I have a point of suppression, so that drops me down to three, uh, uh, sorry, eight altogether. Um, and that's about it. Am I going to shoot twice with the rapid fire rule for the AK or is eight going to be enough to beat that guy and hopefully kill him? No, let's drop it and fire twice. It gives me a total of six. So again, starting on four plus a dice roll, very nice. It gives me a total of ten and I lose one because of my suppression. So it gives me a total of seven and nine. All right, let's roll up this guy's defense. His defense is two plus one for the barrier he's behind, which is three plus a dice roll. Three and six. Nope, he's going to take a wound from that one and the other one. Um, that'll cancel out this one here. So he's been shot out twice. So again, we need suppression. And he's going to take a lethality roll from this one here on a four or more he dies. Yeah, killed. All right, the odds have evened a little bit. So he dies. This guy at the top up here is going to try and shoot over and hit this guy here. So he's starting on a four plus a dice roll. Gives him a total of eight. Minus the one for the suppression that he's carrying with him at the moment. And plus one because I'm calling him elevated. So we're back up to eight. Am I going to fire twice with this guy? Of course I am. So starting on a four or five because he's elevated. Um, and minus the one for suppression. So we're starting off at four plus three is um, seven. All right, let's roll up this guy's defense. No, he's going to take a hit from this one. And he's going to take a hit. Four plus his defense of two brings him to um, six plus seven, eight for the cover. So eight will cancel out one of these. But he's still been shot out twice. So he takes two more points of suppression. And another lethality roll. Now, this is one thing that we might need to check, and I can clarify this later on because I'm not sure where it is in the rule book. This guy's already wounded. So if I shoot him again, do I kill him? You know, let's, let's have a look here in the book. Let's look it up whilst we're here, right? Because we're not – this is not a professional sort of thing. Um, combat phase. Shooting and moving, targeting rolls, direct fire modifiers, lethalities, casualties, and, sh and bleeding out. No. Shooting as a casualty. Shooting at a captive or a casualty. A range attack may be made at uh, a captive, uh, captor, uh, attending model or casualty. However, the targeting roll fails to hit the target, then the other model is hit. Okay, fine. Shooting at casualties. Casualties may be shot at as normal, and if the casualty sustains any additional hits, then it is immediately removed as a fatality regardless of the weapon lethality. This may happen in a single range attack where multiple shots were fired from one weapon, in which case the casualty becomes a fatality if a second hit is sustained. Well, there we go. So this guy here is dead. Let's move all this crap out of here. We lost somebody in behind these crates here. Get rid of that wound. Now, all this suppression that was on this guy gets transferred to other people in the squad, and given that this is the only guy left in the squad, he's now carrying six suppression with him. So that guy dies. Not looking good now. Tide has certainly turned. So shot, 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 shot. This guy shot. This guy can't see anything. Um, that's the end of the turn. We'll clear this light wound from this guy because he recovers. Now we need to roll our initiative. It's turn three. Things not looking good for our little Force Recon guys. 
started off strong, but in a very, very bad position at the moment. And, you know, we didn't get a chance to fire a light machine gun. We didn't get a chance to fire off any grenades. Um, anyway, let's finish up with this turn because, you know, I think the game is pretty much over at this stage. This guy here has absolutely no chance of winning the initiative roll. Uh, it's a dice roll, four, plus his command, which is four. So that gives him a total of eight. And then we're losing six points because of suppression. So that brings him to a total of two. Um, these guys, when did they suffer this suppression? I can't remember. I've made a little suppression tracker, which, you know, uh, I should have here, but, you know, I don't know where it's gone. So that I can track how much suppression I've suffered in the previous turn. Anyway, so let's roll this guy here. He's got four plus three for his command, minus the two suppression that they have on them. Gives him a total of six. And these guys win the initiative. Anything they're going to do in the command phase? Well, look, I was going to say that we're not going to use anything from the command phase. But let's have a quick look here. If we skip back to um, uh, where is it? the command phase, there's a rule here called rally, which squad leaders and commanders can use. Um, I'm passing a command test, so that's just a D6. It's got to be equal to a less than the command. The player removes D6, uh, rolls a D6 and removes that number of suppression points from each model in his squad. So let's try that. So his uh, command is three, so I need a three or less, which I do. So I roll a D6, and now I can remove three suppression from each person. It removes that number of suppression from each model in his squad, or model within 12 inches in the case of non-coherent elites. So this guy loses his suppression, this guy loses his suppression, and, um, <coughs> excuse me. Now we can move on to movement, and uh, uh, I'll come back here, sorry. They're, those guys have had their command phase. Now I'll come back to this command phase. I do lose a point of suppression during the command phase, so one of these guys would have lost a point of suppression. I lose a point of suppression. He's going to try and use rally on a four or less. He does, so how much suppression does he remove from himself? Four points. He's plucking up his courage, last man standing. He's got to kill these guys and then call in some, uh, some support to take his friends home. Okay, so now we go back to these guys. It's their movement and their tactical action phase. So things are looking pretty sightless at the moment. So I can't climb up. Just on the other side of the building here, I don't know if you can see from where you are, there's a little man standing here. He can't climb onto this building because it's two inches above him. He can only climb one inch unassisted. So I'm going to move the team leader back here on a three or more, which is their agility. A three or less, sorry. He can climb up onto those crates. He does, and he'll end his turn there. This guy's then going to try and climb onto the roof here. Um, and he's going to use this guy to give him a leg up. So if we have a look in the movement section. Uh, movement. Leg up. To perform this action, any model in contact with an impassable terrain object up to two inches high may help other models cross it as if it, uh, as if it is difficult terrain after a successful agility test by the model wishing to make the climb. Okay. So this guy's going to try and climb up here. He needs a three or less, which he can't do. Okay. That's a bummer. Otherwise, we could have, this, this guy over here would have boosted this guy up onto the roof and we could have got him up there. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to move this guy six inches over here. To do that, I need to climb through this crap here. So he needs a three or less. No. All right. Now, I'm not entirely sure what happens here when you fail an agility test. If you just can't do that action or if that's the end of that guy's movement. Um, I'm not entirely sure. So I'm playing it that, you know, he's trying to get through that stuff. Something goes wrong and he either freaks out or he traps his ankle or he thinks about it again and says, no, nah, it's probably not a good idea. And that's the end of his movement. So that's all three of those guys. This guy here, again, we can't see anything. So I'm just going to move this guy across here a little bit. I can't unit coherency. 
we're out of coherency. Oh, come on, Viv. So I've got, I have to move this guy so my squad maintains coherency. Okay, well, that's really all they can do. Now, my force recon guy here. You know, I could, I could just shuffle him over a little bit. So let's, let's shuffle him over a little bit. We'll take his suppression with him. We'll shuffle him over the corner here just so we can see over these crates and shoot that guy. So that's his movement phase. Before he gets a chance to do that, this guy can now see him. Yep. So let's go around the other side. It's the combat phase now. Um, these guys are also going to be able to see him. Let's get down. Yeah. Oh, that guy might be screwed. All right. So we're going to shoot this guy with the AK. Shooting value of three. No, sorry, four plus a dice roll. So it gives me a total of six. Um, nothing special on that, but... You know, it's not a fantastic shot, so we'll drop it to five and use rapid fire and fire again. Even worse. So that gives me a total of five. So I've got two shots at five. Oh, sorry, four, because um, I rolled a four. And uh, no, I rolled a one, sorry. This guy has a shooting roll of, a shooting stat of four, which gives me a total of five. But because I rapid fire, I lose one point. Okay, so... This guy's now been shot at twice, so he takes two points of suppression. And he's got to make some saving throws. So it's his defense, which is two, plus one because he's behind cover, plus one because he's more than 50% obscured. Um, and let's roll that. So four plus a dice roll. Six clears this one. Four plus three clears this one. So he's fine. Now, I'm not 100% sure. Let's just double check you know what I'm doing here because as far as I'm aware where are we Our tactical combat phase type of cover right so here only 50% of man size target exposed is a minus one to the shooting oh it's to the shooting it's not Ah, I've been doing the other way around. Well, there we go. So the modifier is to your shooting roll, not to your defense roll. And then examples of cover. You know, this guy's behind barricades, etc. So it's a minus two. Okay, so I've been doing the shooting completely wrong. But, you know, that's why we're doing this, right? Okay, so we'll try and remember that for the next game. That's the shooting happening over here. Actually, we've got two more guys to shoot with, or at least one more guy to shoot with. So... Let's try out this correct way of doing the shooting. This guy can't shoot because he's got a man right in front of him. So we'll shoot this guy here. He gets one shot. He's got a shooting stat of four. Plus a dice roll. Gives me a total of eight. Minus one because the guy's obscured. Minus two because of the cover. Gives me a score of six. Now this guy has a defense of two plus a dice roll. Gives me a total of seven. So that cleans this up. But because he's been shot, you know, I need to allocate out to him another point of suppression. Well, there we go. That's their shooting turn. Now he's going to try and fire back. Now, keeping in mind that suppression is also a negative modifier when shooting, let's see what he gets. So he can rapid fire, but let's see if he does first. So we start off with a shooting stat of five plus a dice roll gives me a total of six now I get plus one to that because of the carbines special rule compact that's pretty much it now minus one if I shoot twice and minus four for my suppression okay so his first shot scores a two let's roll up the second one five plus a dice roll gives me a score of 10. And again, we've got our negative modifier. So I drop one for the carbine special rule of firing twice rapid fire. I get that back because of the carbines special rule compact. I lose four points of suppression. Now that I say that, I don't know if I did the first shot correctly. I lose four points of suppression and I end up with a six. So I've got 
one, two, and one, six. So this guy's been shot at twice. So we give him two points of suppression. Bam, bam. And make his defense rolls. So it's a dice roll plus his defense of two. Uh, uh, I'm doing it wrong again. Six plus two is a total of seven. I was then going to give him extra bonuses because of his cover. But in this case, my initial two drops to a one because of the, the cover. The negative modifier is for the shooter, so I lose one point because of the cover that he's in, and I lose one point from this one because of the cover that he's in. So this seven easily clears up this five. Again, we've got two plus uh, his defense of two, plus a dice roll of three gives him a total of five, which easily clears this up. So no dice there. That's the end of this shooting turn. That's the end of that shooting turn. Nobody's got any wounds or anything to clean up. There we go. Let's call it there. There's some very quick examples of some of the shooting that's happening here in Spectre. Um, it's fairly brutal. And, you know, it, it's fairly straightforward. Once you get sort of used to the mechanics and you understand the rules for cover correctly, um, you know, which, you know, I'll, we'll make sure that we try to do from here on in. Um, read the rule book again. Read that section again. Um, it's fairly straightforward. There we go. Hopefully next time, you know, we can get some grenades and stuff going off. Um, use some fragmentation weapons and some blast templates and all that sort of stuff. But there we go. Let's call that there. There's a very quick example of, you know, three turns of Spectre where we're just worrying about movement and shooting. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope it's been helpful. Catch you next time. See ya.